Space Program, Mary Pendleton. Mary Pendleton is a social media expert with a passion for Instagram. She helps purpose-driven businesses get seen on social media and has been dubbed the Instagram queen by her clients. Mary lives in San Francisco with her three kids and husband and has degrees in art history and nonprofit management. You can follow Mary on Instagram at lovemarypendleton. Welcome, Mary. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited to dig in with everyone today. Um, we're such big fans of the SF Public Library. So when you invited me, I just thought, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to dig into Instagram with everyone. So let's dive in. Today we're going to talk about stress-free social media. Um, I know Kirsty kind of did a little introduction on me, but one thing that we didn't mention is that I am a self-proclaimed chillpreneur. Um, I cannot deal with stress. This whole past year has been a little bit um, more stress than I wanted, especially as a mom of three young kids here in San Francisco. But um, when it comes to social media, I just want to streamline it, things. My hashtag that I use all the time is Instagram and chill. So today I'm gonna to share some of those chill but productive tactics with you guys. So today we are going to cover first how to locate the people who are most likely to buy your product or service on Instagram. Hello, anybody out there? We're gonna find them. Um, second, we're going to talk about how to position yourself for maximum exposure on Instagram. Um, we want to find all those raving fans out there and connect you with them because everybody has something to offer that other people are looking for, right? So we just have to figure out how to make those connections on social media and find the right people for you. And third, we're going to talk about how to be as efficient as possible so you're not chained to your social media every day. Um, this is something that I'm so passionate about because some people just get stuck in that scroll hole. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you're just like scroll, 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 or like so stressed about what to post. And an hour later, you've got like one sentence pulled up and an okay picture. And it's just, it can be such a time suck. So we're going to figure out a way to make things better. So does that sound good for everyone? Now you might be asking some questions in the chat. I'm not looking at them right now, but we will dive into them at the end of the talk. Um, having the chat up is just like too, too stressful for me, right? Too distracting. So we're just gonna um, check it at the end, but feel free to type things in there as we go and we will circle back at the end. All right, so like we said, my name's Mary Pendleton. I run Mary Pendleton Social. It's been going for about six years now. Um, and I really, um, do full service management for small businesses. Um, I've kind of, you know, do like some strategy sessions for people. Do I have a couple of courses? Um, but really the full management is what I've been doing for the past several years. And sometimes I feel like this, right? So I think I've had like up to 12 clients at a time. So creating content for 12 different Instagram accounts, five posts a day. I mean, sorry, whoa, not five posts a day, five posts a week. Um, but it can be like such a juggle. And I've really, I don't think I've dropped the ball too much, but especially there at the beginning, things were um, really disorganized. So I created a system for myself. And that's the system I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. And I call it the FAR method. It's my three-step stress-free social media system. So I hope you have your pen and paper out because there's going to be some good little nuggets in this. Okay, so FAR is an acronym in case you couldn't tell. It stands for find the people who need you, amplify your value, and replicate it. So um, we're going to go through those and look at how far you've come <laughs> by the end. You'll be saying that to yourself. So I have worked with lots of different clients, everything from nationwide travel apps to um, small nonprofits, brick and mortar businesses, um, bakeries, all types of stuff. But today I thought as an example, since I think most people here are location-based businesses, right? Like probably um, storefronts. I figured I'm gonna use as an example, this hair salon that I used to run an Instagram account for called The Lane. They're based in Pack Heights. And I thought that they would be a good example of um, 
work that I've done before. So we're going to use them as kind of a um, sample as we go, the Lane SF. Um, okay, so let's start with number one, find your people. Um, so you've probably thought about your target market before, but maybe you haven't thought about it like through the eyes of Instagram. Like, who do you want to find you on Instagram? Who do you want to connect with and convert from audience into paying customer? So before you start creating any posts, you need to think about who you're speaking to. And there's really two ways to do this. So you can look at them first based on demographics. So that would be like, you know, they're, let's use the lane as an example. So maybe like a 27 year old eco-minded female who lives in San Francisco. Those would all be demographics. The psychographics though, well, actually that eco-minded, that's more of a psychographic, right? So it's kind of the, um, the mindset of the person. So what are their hopes and dreams? What keeps them up at night? What really stresses them out that you can help with? Those are the things that um, are, are good to pinpoint on a person on Instagram too. And one reason I love Instagram compared to like maybe Facebook or Pinterest or something is that on Instagram, people self-segment themselves with hashtags and with accounts they follow. And it's really easy to find certain groups of people because they're labeling with these, um, labeling themselves with these categories across Instagram. So it's really fun to like kind of go through and find little gold mines of potential customers that you can build relationships with. So, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So some questions to ask yourself about your, your um, ideal customer. Who is your ideal customer? What problems can you solve for them? Where do they hang out on social media? Um, and by that, I mean like, what other big accounts do they follow? Um, where have they checked in on, on Instagram? Like, um, let's say your ideal customer is like San Francisco moms. Maybe there's certain accounts where, um, you know, like mom groups, like Golden Gate Mothers Group or something like that. So people who follow big accounts like that, that really identify who they are um, as a person. Or like maybe people have checked into the target on Geary or something like that. And maybe you're searching for people who are those types of people. So um, those location check-ins can be really useful to find people. Not that you should find them and start like spamming them, but um, maybe, well, we'll get into it in a little bit. This is just how we identify who those people are and where they're hanging out on social media. So the second step is amplify your value. This is the biggest step we're gonna go through today and it's actually in two different parts. So first of all, we have to bring the value before we can amplify it. So um, this is really gonna be our segment about creating posts, what types of posts do best on Instagram um, and things to consider as you're, you're building them. So I always like to say your Instagram feed should be more like a magazine and less like a catalog. So by that, I mean like more like a real simple magazine with lots of editorials, lots of um, wide ranging stories and less like a Eddie Bauer catalog that is just kind of like a lookbook, like offering things that you sell. So think about things in a in a broader sense of content rather than just like saying buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. I actually like to include um, or like to use like a ratio, like out, let's say I'm doing five posts, four out of those five should be just providing value. And the fifth one can be like a very clear like salesy post. The value post can also include products that support whatever value you're giving, but um, it shouldn't be sale, 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 because Instagram is really the personification of your brand. It, social media started out as like, you know, single people. Um, so when businesses come to social media, it's good to think of still having that personality there. So not just selling, 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 but um, creating those connections and making people feel like they're friends with the brand or they're friends with the team behind the brand. And those are the kind of connections that will, you know, kind of plant themselves in the seed of the customer and create lifelong relationships. Okay, so I like to create content that builds a mental or emotional connection. 
So there's really three types of content that do that. The first is entertaining. So make them laugh, right? This kind of stuff is so good for social media. The second is educational. Teach them something, right? Diagrams, charts, um, breaking things down, three reasons why, things like that. So we have entertaining, educational, and the last one is inspirational. Show people how things could be so much better if they used your product or how much fun they could have if they came to your store, things like that. Show them the inspiration. That's a big reason why people come to Instagram. So examples of these types of posts that I made for the lane were, this was an entertaining one, like a funny quote, Instagram gold. So this was right at the beginning of the pandemic. I don't think we knew how thing, how bad things were gonna get, but we said, no matter how crazy things get over the next few weeks, I ask you, please do not panic and box dye your hair. I don't think we had any re realization that it was gonna be like a year until people <laughs> could get back. But anyways, um, that one did pretty well. An educational post I did for the salon was um, teaching people, we did a reel here, teaching people about their eco beads faucets um, that does magical stuff to the water as it comes out. I don't even actually <laughs> remember the details, but it was a pretty cool re reel that taught about their special um, environmental faucets that they have there. And then an inspirational one, we did kind of just like a inspirational, not only hairstyle, but just like all in all vibe type of a post. So something that you can do, create three to five brand pillars that fit within these categories. So these are the types of things that you're gonna post about regularly on your Instagram and people are going to start creating those connections. For the hair salon, we did style tutorials, eco products. We talked about our team. Um, we said, we, we did post about how it feels to be a client in the salon. And we did like lifestyle vibe content that um, kind of, I mean, that's kind of also explaining how it feels to be a client in the salon. So another thing um, is people use Instagram to show people what it feels like to work with you or what it feels like to come into your shop. That's like they that's what they're coming for is that experience. So, um, and Instagram is a great tool to show that experience. So uh, like I could get my hair done anywhere, right? But by finding this Instagram account and I'm like, oh, wow, this is what it feels like to walk in the front door. This is the, the whole, <laughs> I mean, for lack of a better word, experience. I keep saying that again, but show them um, what it feels like. And that's what's gonna make people come into the actual store. So let's talk about visual identity a little bit. This is like kind of the overall aesthetic of the account. Um, I think we all have a good sense of what a brand means, but I really like this quote here from Scott Cook. A brand isn't what we tell the customer it is, it's what customers tell each other it is, right? So you want people to talk about your your brand and um, explain how it makes them feel, explain the overall energy they get from it. So good consistent branding makes you look like an authority in your field. And that is very apparent when someone comes to your Instagram account. Um, they, they'll trust you more if they know what to expect. So if they come to your account and everything is like kind of random, they're like, I don't think I'm going to follow this because I don't know what they're going to post next and it's not clear like what I'm signing up for. So using that uh, visual identity to just kind of um, make things more cohesive and create that expectation really makes you look more like an authority in your field. So if you're not sure where to start, I just like to search Pinterest for color palettes. You probably already have um, Hopefully you have like some brand guidelines. Maybe you've worked with a branding expert, um, but you kind of like translate that into your Instagram account. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about my favorite tool for this, but um, just wanted to talk about the visual identity now because it's really an important part of what makes people actually click follow, you know? Okay, and let's talk about captions. So creating the beautiful image is one thing, um, but you have to have the meat of the post in the caption, right? To like fit, 
<laughs> close the loop. So it's really just a, a quick three-step process I use on my captions. It's got to have a hook, it has to have value, and it has to have a call to action at the end. So the hook would be like, wow, or oh my gosh, you'll never believe, or teachers, this is for you, whoever you're talking to, whoever your target market is. Then you're going to give the value, teach them something, um, paint a picture for them, tell a story. And then the call to action at the end is head to the link in my bio for XYZ. Give them some kind of free, um, or not free, but give them somewhere to go to follow up to get more information. So always the call to action, it doesn't have to be click the link in the bio. It could just be encouraging people to respond with a certain answer to a question or um, tag somebody in your life who needs to hear this, something like just tell them what to do. People are much more likely to do what you want when you actually ask them clearly to do it. We're not going to get too much into captions today, but I think that this three step method is super helpful. Okay, so the second part of our second step is that amplification. So using the tools that Instagram gives you for maximum exposure. So when it comes to tools, there's like Instagram posts, there's Instagram reels, there's Instagram stories. Instagram has come so far in the past couple of years and really diversified their content creation tools. And it can get kind of overwhelming. Um, raise your hand if you get overwhelmed by all of that stuff. I can't see your hands, but I know they're up. Um, so let's just break it down a little bit. Let's talk about the grid. So that's like this kind of stuff here. Is my pointer on? No, let me turn it on. These types of posts. Um, so they're really the best for reaching a new audience. When I'm creating posts in the grid, I'm speaking to people who I hope have no idea who I am. Of course, my current followers are like, the majority of the people who see it, but I'm hoping to reach a wider audience and it's like wide open sea. This is me, nothing hiding. I'm, you know, like this is me open to the world, come find me. So reels, Instagram reels are like those short form videos, 15 second video clips. They do live in your grid also, just like your posts do. Um, we won't get too into to reels right now, but this is the stuff that you're speaking to the public about. Then you have your Instagram stories, which when you post them are up here, there's like a little circle around your logo that's when you have an Instagram story and that they only are up there for 24 hours. And I use those for fostering relationships with my existing followers. So this is more uh, behind the scenes, less polished, um, silly stuff like getting to know me. And so I'm talking about me as a personal brand, but for a brick and mortar business or any, you know, brand that doesn't have a face to it. You could use this for getting to know our team, um, just behind the scenes kind of stuff, more information that supports whatever you posted in your um, grid that day. You can say, head to our stories for some more ideas and then post a few more things there. Um, but this is really good for growing you know, warming up your customers once they start following you. And the other cool thing about stories is that they have those buttons. So those are like the quizzes or the um, polls or the little sliders. It's really easy to engage on a story. So I love this because it tells anyone who engages on your story, it tells the algorithm that they're interested in your content and it will show even more of your grid posts. It will show more of your your stuff in the future to anyone that engaged with your story. So I say use all of those tools as often as possible. I try and create a poll every single day or a poll, a quiz, or like a slider. Do you know what I mean by the slider? There's like a funny little thing. So when you're creating Instagram story content, try and think of ways that you can engage um, your audience and think of ways that you can make it really easy for them to participate. And then that tells the algorithm that they should see more of your content. So it's super, super cool. All right. So this is my theory. Instagram is like a party and hashtags are the invitations to your party. We're going to talk about hashtags now. Um, 
And then, so you are having your party on Instagram, but there's also other parties on Instagram that you need to go attend. But hashtags are the invitations to your party. So hashtags are really just a filing system that help you get found on Instagram. They categorize your posts. So hashtags are, um, you know, you can use up to 30 of them. They go somewhere in your post and, and they kind of just like a little um, library filing system. They put that post in 30, up to 30 different places, however you categorize yourself. I always love this um, Shit's Creek meme hashtag. Is that two words? No, it's just one word. Um, but when it comes to using hashtags, so people search hashtags all the time on Instagram. So by you putting yourself out there, that's inviting your 30 different types of people to come see your stuff. So when it comes to hashtags, some hashtags are really, really big. So for example, here on Instagram, I searched hashtag hair, and you can see all of these posts have millions and millions and millions of posts that have used that hashtag before. That tells me that these hashtags are not going to be effective for my brand. It says that so many people have used these that when I post with the hash these hashtags, my post is just going to get lost in a big sea of other posts. I should instead use more niche hashtags so that I can actually have a little piece of that pie, a bigger piece of that pie, rather than competing with all of these other people who are using um, hair hashtags. So instead, look, if we do SF hair, these are more likely the hashtags that I want to use. And especially since we're all San Francisco based right here, using location based hashtags is a really effective way to get found by local people. Um, and so I actually use a hashtag ladder strategy. And by that, I mean, so if I'm using 30 hashtags in a post, 10 hashtags will be up to 25K uses. I didn't include the word uses here, I don't know why. Up to 25, it's been used up to 25,000 times. 10 more hashtags have been used up to 100,000 times. And the last that has been used the biggest, up to 500,000 uses. So a third really small, a third somewhere in the middle, and then a third on the bigger end. So I, for this um, lesson today, I'm keeping us all on the smaller side. Really, you could probably go up to about a million uses on hashtags, but I think that if you are location-based, you should keep things even more niche because you don't wanna attract someone in Cincinnati that like is not gonna come to your store, right? So it's better to have more quality than quantity. And this system is going to help you really hone in on the exact right person. So when it comes to types of hashtags, you're like, how in the world do I even think of 30 hashtags? <laughs> that sounds like so much. So here's some ideas. You can do location-based hashtags. You could describe your ideal clients. You could say like SF mama. Um, you could describe the actual image itself. That's always a great way to do it. And then also using emotional words like hashtag tired mama. <laughs> Maybe I'm explaining myself right now. But um, those types of hashtags people um, really dig into on Instagram as well. And so like you could always start with SF hair and then Instagram suggests all these other awesome ones. So grab a pen and paper. If you're old fashioned or grab the notes pad on your, the notes app on your iPhone and create little sets of 10 hashtags at a time. Um, and then you can just copy and paste them into your post depending on what you're posting about that day. So think back to the brand pillars that I was suggesting you put together and create some hashtag sets that relate to each of those brand pillars. And then when it comes time to post, you can copy and paste from your pre-researched hashtag sets and paste them right into the post. Now I know somebody out there is saying, is it better to post your hashtags in the caption or in the comment? I get that question like, it's probably my second most asked question. The first most asked question, I'm curious if someone's gonna ask it, we'll see at the end, I'll answer it anyways. But this question, it really, the answer is it doesn't matter. I like to put my hashtags in the first comment because it kind of just buries it, um, looks a little bit cleaner on the account. And later once there's other comments, they kind of get hidden and, and it's just cleaner. 
But if you want, if you're going fast and you just want to paste all your hashtags right in there with your caption, that's totally fine. Both of them are just as effective. Okay, so like I said, Instagram's a party. That's how we're inviting people to see our posts, but we also have to go out to their parties and we should bring snacks and champagne or something, right? So let's talk about outbound engagement. So this is going out, finding your ideal customer, commenting on their posts, not being like a salesy weirdo, but just saying, you know, answering whatever question they asked or complimenting them on their shoes or just being, you know, a supporter of whatever they're saying. So this is actually called the $1.80 method. It was coined by Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, and he said, basically, leave your two cents on up to 90 posts. It adds up to $1.80. You're just leaving your two cents here and there, you know, leaving little comments, leaving your little thoughts for people. Now, he suggests doing 90 posts a day. I have never personally reached 90 posts a day because I have other things to do, but I could do 12 to 13 posts a day and that equals 90 posts per week. So um, I do the $1.80 method every week and um, it's actually great. I get a ton of visibility by the right people. And let me show you a tool that I use to do it. So I search hashtags that my ideal customer would be using on her posts. Now this is a tool called $80.com. It's spelled out and it's a Chrome plugin. And basically you can tell it what hashtags you want to comment on and it pulls them up in these nice little categories. Of course, you could always do this method like natively on Instagram, but I like doing it on this Chrome plugin because it separates me from Instagram and keeps me from getting distracted. I can use this, I think it's free too, but, um, or like there's a free version, but this is, this screenshot that I took was for a client who was engaging with Austin based mom. So not our San Francisco crew, but it works the same way. And it can pull up either top posts or most recent posts that have used those hashtags. And then basically we just go through and comment on as many as possible. Um, and it gets a lot of visibility, not just by the person who you're commenting on, but by their audience as well. And the hope is that they see your comment and they're like, cool, what's that? And they like click your name and follow through and they like discover you naturally, but really you did it on purpose. So $80.com, it's a Chrome plugin, go find it. It's built in like New Zealand or something. The team that made it is really awesome also. Um, we become Instagram friends. They probably found me by commenting on my posts, right? And like did the whole method to, to uh, get me as a customer. And here I am, I'm a customer of theirs evangelizing. So it works. Now let's talk about other ways to get amplified. Um, teaming up, let me move this. So by this, there's a few different methods that I have to tap into your community. Um, when one of us shines, all of us shine. Um, and using the power of connections and relationships to grow our accounts. So one way to do this is with Instagram Live. They now have a way that you can chat with up to three other people. So four people total in an Instagram Live. And it alerts all of the followers of all of those people. So one great strategy is to do an IG live with other people once a week. You could have a recurring show. You could bring on your um, customers that you love. You could bring on other experts in your industry. You could do like a Q&A session with somebody else. But it's a great way to get visibility in front of that other person's audience. And for them too, they get visibility in front of your audience. So find someone that has a similar audience to yours and partner up it works really well. Now, giveaways are also effective on Instagram. <coughs> you have to make sure you're giving away something that people actually want, but partnering with one other um, account, putting together a really cool package and just saying, follow both of us and comment for a chance to win X, Y, Z. It's like kind of an old fashioned way to grow an account, but it still can be really effective. So my only suggestion is don't do a giveaway all by yourself always partner up with another account so that you can kind of um, 
share followers that way, as long as it's an account whose followers are also ideal customers of yours. Like, let's say there are a few businesses all in a similar shopping district, like I live in the inner sunset. So let's say like um, a bunch of the Ninth Avenue shops get together, put together a fun little price package and say, you know, we're doing a Ninth Avenue customer appreciation week or something. And um, so then the followers of Kira Kids might also be interested in San Francisco and Tartine and everyone there and miss, you know, the the magic shop right there. Um, but it helps just get a lot more exposure for the other businesses that may may not currently follow them. Paid partnerships are another opportunity. So not only ads, ads are fine, but um, I'm talking more about like finding um, in, like influencers for lack of a better word, but like people who already have a big following of people who are your, your ideal audience and doing a sponsored post with them. Um, that is a really good way. It's kind of like a giveaway, but with like a heavier hitter and you, you like give them something nice in return, probably money, but maybe it's a product that you have or, or something else. But that is like putting just a little bit of money in it can really grow your account a lot faster. So we have reached the R out of the FAR, which is replicating all of this with systems. Because you might be a little bit overwhelmed at this point and not sure how it's a sustainable approach. But um, I like to put systems into place to replicate this exposure over and over again put things on autopilot, not have to reinvent the wheel every single week because I think we've all been there. So I'm gonna share with you my two favorite tools. <laughs> the first one is Canva templates. So I hope that you know what Canva is by now. They do have a really big like ad campaign right now. So I think even the bus stop by my house has a Canva ad on it and I see their ads on TV and billboards and everything, but it is such an amazing tool for creating content when it comes to Instagram. One second. And I love it because you can create templates on Canva and you can duplicate it, change it a little bit, and then the graphic is ready to go and it still has all of your same fonts and colors and general you know, layout and idea. <coughs> so here's an example of a template that I created for the lane. So we did this quote card thing and I created it once and then I duplicated it and I created another quote, duplicated it, created another one, duplicated it, created another one. So that's four pieces of content that like did not take me that long. Um, of course, I wouldn't post these back to back, but let's say every Monday I, I post a quote or something. Super easy to create one set of templates and then like just kind of fill it, fill them in every time. So here's a look into my Instagram account. And I also use templates with Canva to create these, but actually I have a membership to a Canva template subscription <laughs> um, run by your template club is what it's called. And they send me new Canva templates twice a month. And it is like such a time saver because I don't have to create the templates myself. They have these really awesome, like some um, really talented graphic designer creates them. So it's not me who like, I'm not actually a graphic designer. So some of my posts might be a little bit funky, but when I have this membership, it's like, I know that these are tried and true graphics and I just have to pop my pictures in, change it easily to my color scheme that's already set up in Canva pop my own personal pictures into the little holes, into the little frames that they um, set for me, change the text out to whatever I want. And it's like, so good to go. Like, obviously like these are my kids here. This is just a picture of me, I think, but um, templates are everything. So this is what it's called. I don't, this is not my membership. I'm just a member of it, but it's called your template club. Definitely something to look into. This woman named Manu runs it and it's, such a lifesaver. I love her. Okay, my second favorite tool is Planoly. So Planoly is 
an Instagram planning app. They have it for desktop or for your phone. They connect to each other. And it has been such a lifesaver because when I started as a social media manager, everything was on my phone. That's actually when I started wearing glasses because I was like, but Planoly lets me create all the content on my desktop, schedule it. Maybe I can check on it on my phone later if I want, but like being able to sit down and create stuff at my desk is such a better process for my creativity than doing it on my phone, which makes me go blind. So totally check out Planoly. I'm going to walk through some of the features that will save you so much time by using it. First, it lets you plan your posts on a calendar. So here is one of my other clients, the Britain Fund. It's a nonprofit tree organization. And so this is our Planoly desktop app. And let me just point some things out to you. So the Britain Fund has a really small budget. They can only do four posts a week, which is fine. We looked at their stats and it looks like their audience is most on Instagram Thursday through Sunday. Their audience is like professional arborists, professional tree people who are not on their phones throughout the day. So Thursday through Sunday is mostly when they're on their phones. So with that in mind, we created these little sticky notes of their brand pillars, and we map out these recurring sticky notes throughout the month, talking about things that you know they want to talk about. So you'll see on Saturdays, we rotate between free downloads, books that they sell using their smile.amazon thing. On Sundays, we always do a quote. We talk about their different four states of their region on Thursdays and we rotate between them. Fridays, we've been talking about birds on Fridays a lot lately. We're gonna switch that up pretty soon, but it's just so nice to map this out ahead of time <coughs> to make sure we're covering all of our bases and talking about rather than just like creating on the fly um, and accidentally like leaving out a whole portion of their um, things that they offer, mapping it out is so awesome. Then we can auto schedule posts with Planoly. So this is the little um, content creation part of the tool. So we put the caption in here, we load the graphic in here, you can there's some editing tools there um and then we can pop in saved hashtags here and we can schedule it whoop, to instagram to facebook or to twitter if they had a twitter account it's so awesome now to use this you have to have a business account on instagram which is like just a flick of a switch but totally worth it so the scheduling is just great because i can sit down schedule out a whole month of content for them flick everything on ready to go and then i'm done like could you imagine just sitting down and creating a whole month's worth of posts for your business and it doesn't even have to be five days a week it could be like this where you maybe just do twice a week or you maybe just do every saturday like whatever you want to start with as long as you're consistent that's what's most important so like i was saying um this hashtag thing here um you can save your hashtag sets in Planoly also. So like I was saying in the hashtag section about like saving your sets in the notes app on your phone, you can actually save them here in Planoly and you just like paste them into your post ahead of time. So I've saved so many sets of hashtags for all of my clients and all I have to do is copy and paste them in. It's like a no brainer. It's so great. And the last thing I love about Planoly is the analytics. So you can look at all of the data. Instagram itself only shows you analytics for one month, but Planoly just keeps it in there forever, which is so great. And it also shows you what your top performing posts were. So you know what did well and what you should do again. Like super important part of planning your posts is doing more of what's worked in the past. So, okay, I know it's been a lot of information. Let's all take a breath. This is stress-free social after all. And we're gonna go back to FAR. Find people who need you, amplify your value and replicate. So we do have a little bit of homework for you guys. Um, along with the uh, replay of this sent at, um, after the class is over, 
I have a PDF put together, the Stress-Free Social Workbook. It has a branding worksheet for you, an ideal customer worksheet for you, and a list of resources, like links to Planoly and Canva and a few other things I don't even remember. But it um, will really, it's just, like, you know, your personal playbook. You can do with it what you want, but it'll help you line things out. So, and a lot of people ask, what's like a regular schedule of Instagram for like, what should I, what's the expectation? So I usually do maybe two hours a week planning my posts and I could probably even get maybe two or three weeks worth of posts done in that brainstorming session. But I like to, um, to you know, block out a big chunk of time and knock out as many posts as I can. Then I spend about 20 minutes a day engaging with my ideal customers and sometimes if I'm posting stories, it maybe takes me 10 minutes, but um, yeah, that should be pretty easy. The posting stories shouldn't be like a huge content creation stress mess. So in addition to the workbook that you guys are getting automatically, I also have another free download if anyone is interested, because I know there's a lot of Instagram that I did not get to cover. It's just a screenshot of the sign up page but it's my Instagram essentials bundle. It's free. It has a link to supercharge your Instagram bio, um, 30 fill in the blank content ideas, <coughs> must use hashtags for visibility and a whole thing about Instagram highlights, which we didn't touch on at all. But if you go to that link down below, marypendletonsocial.com slash IG essentials, you can sign up and it, it'll automatically email it to you. So, that's about it. Thank you so much. And if we have any questions, I'm happy to dig in. Thank you, Mary. That was excellent. It was so fun and informative. Awesome. So I'm going to take a look at the questions. I didn't see that many, but there was one. Someone asked, uh, do you use the same hashtags for each post or do you switch it up? Really good question. And the answer is I switch it up. So I have sets of hashtags. Um, each set has about 10 hashtags in it. And so like I have a hashtag set for myself for mompreneurs, all these hashtags that mompreneurs use, mom entrepreneurs, right? And so I think I have like three or four different sets of hashtags for mompreneurs. And I just mix through those four sets every time. But let's say I'm doing a post, I might do one mompreneur hashtag set one Instagram help hashtag set and one San Francisco hashtag set. But then on my next post, I would pick three different of my hashtag sets. So in the end, hopefully they're all kind of jumbled together, if that makes sense. Thanks, Mary. We have another question. Um, someone wrote, good recommendations for physical presence. What about specific recommendations for artists? Mm, yeah. Um, are you talking about hashtag recommendations or um, just in general? Let me think. So like finding your, your ideal customer for artists would be, you know, um, like um, other um, artistic blogs or um, other places where your ideal customer might be hanging out. I don't know if they would follow different Etsy accounts, or I guess it really just depends on the type of art, um, funky clothing <laughs> lines or something like that. It depends on you, but um, definitely seeking out people still on Instagram. And then when it comes to hashtags, like just, it, I mean, it depends on who your ideal customer is, but so I wouldn't say use any SF hashtags. I mean, you could, if you're an artist, local people might be more interested in a a local artist than other artists. But um, if you have any more details about your question, I'd love to get more specific. Just comment. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, but whoever asked that question, if you want, you can put more details about what you're asking in the chat. So there's another question. Um, how do we determine who and how many people to follow? Mm, that's a great question. I've heard it said that you should follow less people than follow you but i you know so you're not following like three thousand accounts because that looks like you're kind of spammy um i think follow as many accounts as you can 
as, as you're interested in. I don't think you should follow someone just in the hopes that they'll follow you back because it's going to make Instagram a miserable place for you to exist on if everyone in your feed is like someone that you're not interested in. Do you know what I mean? So I like to keep who I follow like very, mi well, I say very minimal. I think I follow like 1500 people right now, but I've been trying to cut it back <laughs> because I want my experience on Instagram to be positive so that I want to like continue staying on there. And a big part of having a like mental well being on Instagram is not following accounts that make you feel bad about yourself or following accounts that, um, you know, create like a toxic environment. So, be choosy about who you follow. Okay, great, thank you. If there's another question, um, I am a performing artist, Variety, who also reps other Variety artists. Have not yet used Instagram. Suggestions? Mm, interesting, yeah. So you could create a cool community that features you and also um, other people. So you could definitely like, especially if you're a performing artist, those like Instagram reels, those short, form videos would be a really cool tool. So Instagram Reels, um, Instagram is really pushing Reels right now. They're getting a lot more visibility than other like static posts. So it's something to consider like, are you writing the account from the first person or in the third person? Like, is it you and you're showing yourself and then you're also showing other people that you represent? That's a really cool way to do it. And that kind of is um, like how I was saying more magazine and less catalog like you're showing a broader range of things and I think your audience will appreciate that um but then if you did it like in the third person you could include yourself in the group of people that are represented um or you could have it come from you know yourself and you could just talk about the other accounts I mean not the other accounts the other performers and you could all kind of um be represented by one account and one other cool thing you could do is each highlight could have like each one of the performers that's represented could have their own highlight highlights if you don't know are um the little circles that live beneath your i have a picture of it that live beneath your bio and it's where your instagram stories if you want them to stay um alive for longer than 24 hours you can save them to your highlights. Like here, these are the Instagram highlights and they're really prime real estate. So I would suggest creating a different highlight for each performer so that it kind of makes it clearer to the audience um, who's who. Great, thanks Mary. So the person who had a question about artists, um, so they put a little more information there. They were asking about specifics for photographers, not just hashtags, but finding clients for fine art photos, as well as specific hashtags. Yeah. All right. So it, so I have worked with photographers before and we, I mean, a lot of them are like family photographers, so it might be different, but um, really getting niching down to maybe three different types of customers that might that might shop from you so maybe there are people who follow like architectural digest or and not just who follow but one good way to do this is look at architectural digest and look at who is commenting on their posts those are active instagram users that you can then like click through and look at their posts and start commenting on their posts do you know what i mean so um magazines are really or like big blogs are a really good way to find specific groups of people. Um, so I would start there. And then when it comes to hashtags, like there's a ton of fine art hashtags, um, interior design hashtags. So I also have a, a handpicked hashtag library um, that people, it's like 3000 hashtags divided um, by categories because I've written so much hashtag research over the years that I just like started saving them all into this really long doc and organizing it really well. So I think that the link for that resource is in the PDF that's coming at the end. But um, there's definitely a lot of hashtags in there for artists and interior designers and like home stuff. So I would think people who want to buy fine art are buying it for their home, but that might just be an assumption I'm making. 
Thanks, Mary. We have a couple more questions. One is, how do you target other business or technical people? This person is not an IG user at the moment. Okay. So the question was, how do you target other business or technical people? Yes. That's great. So definitely think about what other types of accounts they would follow. So actually my biggest client, I mean, actually these days I only have one really big full-time client um, and it's an app that serves, it's actually the app that I'm using right now. It's called mm -hmm, MMHMM um, and we serve presenters. We also serve teachers, anyone basically who like uses Zoom and wants to use this virtual camera. And so with that account, I, look for other um, types of accounts that professionals would follow. So a lot of it is like, yeah, people who follow Zoom would probably also be interested in our app and we're not competing with them. So I don't feel guilty like um, engaging with their audience because we're really a companion app to Zoom. So thinking about ways that you're not gonna like poach people, but other like related um, accounts in your industry where people have started to hang out already like find the other parties where people are hanging out at and showing up there so if you want to find people you know look for other apps that are um in your same industry if if you're uh, you're looking for technical professionals um there's definitely groups of these people out there also go to those um apps or whatever, start looking at who's commenting and looking at what hashtags they're using on their posts. I did this once when I was trying to target teachers and I found that teachers use this hashtag called feet up Friday, at least they used to in the before times. And it was just a whole bunch of teachers putting their feet up on their desks on Friday. I had no idea about this because I'm not a teacher, but there's definitely these little hashtag communities within different industries. And that if you do enough research on Instagram, you can like tap into these little treasure troves of all of these people using this one hashtag. So um, depending on what your business is, there's definitely people within those industries using hashtags to communicate with each other. Thank you. I think librarians have their own hashtags. Too. Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah, I love it. There's a question from someone. I have several businesses, restaurant, dance teacher, bakery. Do I need three accounts on Instagram? Wow, I love that. Restaurant, dance, teacher, bakery. And I think the answer is yes, actually. This is a common question. And I think that if you're serving three different audiences, then you should have three different accounts. Let's say like for me, love Mary Pendleton, I have you know different offerings, but they all are serving the same type of person. So it can all fit within one account. But um, I don't think that the things that you're doing, I think it would get way too confusing um, if they were all in the same account. So Instagram lets you have up to five, be logged into up to five accounts at the same time. And you can pretty easily switch between the three. I think you would get much more quality of an audience by being very specific on each account. I hope that was the answer you wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, well, so far, I'm just saying a lot of thanks to you, Mary. Um, this, someone says this was such a helpful webinar. Um, someone says, very helpful. I have a lot to learn. So yeah, so far, it's been great. This, um, if there's no other questions, we can end the program. And again, I will be sending out the recording later. But uh, no, it was so fun and super informative. and. Yeah, and if you, anyone here ever has any questions, just DM me on Instagram and I'd love to um, point you in the right direction. So I'm, I'm actually, I just pulled up the chat finally. Someone, I just saw a question, your template, can you repeat? So um, for the templates, it's called your template club. I think I linked to it in the PDF I'm, you're gonna get shortly. So in there and yeah, $80.com, someone linked it. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So feel free to reach out. And I just love San Francisco and small businesses. So thanks for having me here. Thank you, Mary. It was so great to have you. This was like one of my most, most favorite programs. So thank oh, you for thank joining you. us. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye.